batch of young Australian golfers will dream of greatness and glory on the fairways of America. One already trying his luck in the US is Australian Open champion Greg Chalmers, now playing the PGA Tour after qualifying last November. The tour is a life like no other, and Tim Sheridan caught up with Greg in America's Deep South. Four, dogs. Four dogs. Morning. How are you? It feels a little bit like a movie in some ways. I feel like there's so many places I've been to that uh, I've only seen in movies. In some ways it's a little daunting um, because I've never seen, never played with these kind of players before. Um, in other ways, it's just, it's just been really exciting. I mean, I remember I was on the, the first, my first tee at, um, when I played Pebble Beach. And I was standing there waiting for the group in front to clear. It was just happened to be Jim Furyk and David Duval um, playing with, uh, you play with amateurs that week. Now playing with Alice Cooper, the singer, and, uh, and another guy. And then I'm playing with Clint Eastwood and Michael Bolton in the group behind. And the group behind me is Kevin Costner, Tiger Woods, Mark O'Meara, and uh, Ken Griffey Jr. So I kind of, I'm kind of like, well, you know, I'm wedged in the middle there thinking, what am I doing here? Griffey Jr. partner oh, with his good buddy, Mark O'Meara. Come on, keep going. Keep going. If it does seem like a movie, part of the PGA Tour is the deja vu of Groundhog Day. Out of another hotel room, into another rent -a car to another set of freeway exits to find another golf course. No, mate. No problem. Thank you. I'm shocked at it. Why did I do leading? Surprise, surprise, David Duval. was up there somewhere. No matter where he's played, for a first timer, joining the PGA Tour is a serious brush with fame. Where the hand should be reaching for a two iron, the tendency is to wonder where that autograph book went. I still get excited about playing with, uh, you know, I might play with David Duval this week if I get lucky or playing with Greg Norman or I still I still really enjoy doing that and um, I'm, it's really hard to focus on what you have to do when you when you got a draw like that so or, or when these guys are around so I, I've got to improve at it for sure. Sydney born but Perth raised Greg Chalmers oh, no, fell no, no. easily to the addiction of golf after his first game with his father in 1985 but the deal was to go cold turkey in his final year of school where he excelled. What were you going to do at uni? Uh, Journalism, actually. <laughs> I was. Um, I was enrolled in journalism, yeah. I'm, I'd probably do a little differently now. No offence, but <laughs> I found I, I like other things, but uh, yeah, I was going to do journalism. Yeah. Well, it's uh, probably better playing it than covering it, <laughs> yeah. I, I think. It's, yeah, it's a lot. The golfers get to go out in the course. That's the big thing. Yeah, point. that's right. Yeah, <laughs> we get to go and hit the ball. Yeah. Choosing club over keyboard, Greg won the national amateur title in 1993, yeah, but didn't generate any hot copy until he turned pro and won the Players' Championship at Royal Queensland as a 24-year-old. Then, just before last Christmas, he won the Australian Open, just pipping the sentimental favourite, recently widowed Stuart Appleby. The would-be journo stomped all over a good story, but won a lot of hearts anyway. I felt a bit like a villain today because I know how badly everyone wanted Stuart to win. And uh, I think, I think uh, the, the whole country behind you, Stuart. Greg, he's a great player, nice guy. Uh, I've seen what he's made of at Australian Open last year. Um, I tried my guts out to get him and I couldn't. Um, and really a nice, complete player in a game and a very nice gentleman and a good representation um, of Australian sport. But entry to US events like this one can only be gained through PGA Tour qualifying school. 1,100 applicants are whittled down to 169, who then play six rounds for 35 places. Greg tied for fourth. I was like everyone else, so my knees were shaking, and uh, it's, it's fortunate that the reason why you practice so much is so your body knows what to do, because my brain didn't have a clue what to do. But it's a very tight line, even for Phil. Oh, full court pass. Looks like an out to Robinson. What a perfect time! Boy, these guys are good. 
To the question of whether he was as good as these guys, Greg responded by making the halfway cut in four of his first nine starts. But it wasn't until he jumped into contention at the Doral Ryder Open that the reality of the tour hit. The thing over here, it's, it's, uh, it's one shot. You drop 10 or you pick up 10 places. It's, it's, it's so bunched up. And give an example, in Doral, I was two shots off the lead. I went in the, on the last group on Saturday. I was playing in the last group. I went out and shot even par. And I had spike marks all over my back from people just crawling over the top of me. It was just, and this golf course is not easy. I mean, there's, there's a lot of water and a um, lot, of, lot of sand, a lot of bunkers. And, and I didn't play that bad. I shot even par, which is not, you know, it's nothing to be sneezed at. It's not a great score, but it's not, it's not horrendous. And, and I was off for about an hour and a half earlier than the day before. Perhaps the best way to make the comparison is to say that Greg Chalmers went from that victory of a lifetime in the Australian Open to playing for more than twice that sort of money every week here in America. From January through to November, the US PGA Tour dishes up $200 million in prize money, up 30% on last year. For a qualifier like Greg, the temptation would seem to be to go for it every week, but it's not quite that simple. Next on the tee, Perth, Australia, Greg Chalmers. The qualifiers are not guaranteed tournament starts. Every seven weeks, they are re-ranked, and that will decide who gets places in coming events. Greg may not know until the Friday before whether he has a start. When you're a tour school player, it's very hard to knock back events. It's sort of, you think to yourself, that could have been the week. At least, put it this way, perfect week for me to take time off because I'd played three or four in a row, which is normally what guys do, would have been Doral. And I finished 10th and made $70,000. That would have been a perfect week to take off. So he's taking aim, dead aim right at it. As you might expect, the tour uses money no, as its yardstick. 50000 would pay okay. Greg's yearly keep. <laughs> but only the top 125 money earners come back next year. At 117th, with 150000 Greg is well placed with a quarter of the year gone. You start off knowing that you've got to make some money. And then, uh, I mean, I make... I make one, one good check, $69,000, and uh, that's, my, that's my year. Uh, paid for that, don't worry about it, and move on. But that probably wasn't my focal point beginning of the year. I wasn't too concerned about paying my own way because I, apart from the fact it doesn't help me play any better, I just, I knew that um, one week out here could, could do anything for you. And so, and next week could be the week, could be the week after. May, may happen, may not, it's just sort of, it's a matter of stick around, be patient, and, uh, and keep trying to, Work, hard at it. work as he does, Greg battles an old prejudice in golf. With a few major exceptions, Phil Mickelson being the latest, left-handed golfers are considered an oddity, but not a threat. I've had people flat out say to my face, like, you, you got to change. And I'm hopeless right here, just hopeless. And that's, that doesn't matter. I just take it with a grain of salt and off you, off you go. Everyone's, it's, it's going to change, I think. There's a lot more now. There's six on this tour now, six or seven. And I've chatted to Russ Cocker in left hand. He said, 10 years ago, I was the only one. He's done very well to, uh, at the start of the year. Uh, been making cuts, made some money. He's, you know, he's not over the, the hurdle of keeping his card yet, but he's well on the way and he's got some confidence. Uh, and once he gets more and more comfortable about being here, he'll just get better and better. The hardest task for Greg is the mastering of courses he's never seen against players who've been over them a dozen times. But however tough, life on the PGA Tour sure beats another trip through qualifying school. Some guys have done it ten times, some guys first time get through, some guys have been back at, you know, every year for, for years. Um, Do you want to go back? <laughs> no, please. <laughs> please, not no, again. Yeah. Not again. Not <laughs> It's, uh, it's brutal. Yes, it's a hard school. Tim Sheridan.